at the kick for the Jackets. Company back deep for the Jackets of Cleaver. An end over end deep kick that will chase the Cleaver return man back to the five. Bobbles momentarily up to the 10, 15, 20, finds a little seam and is run out of bounds by Gunn up at the 33 yard line. It was the dot car, the other back in the backfield that splits duties with Cumby that returned the ball out to the 34-yard line, and that's where Cleburne will begin first and 10 this evening. And for reasons to keep everything sane tonight in the booth, anytime we refer to the word Yellow Jackets, it will be to Stephenville. If we're talking about Cleburne, we'll only call them by their town name for obvious reasons. That would make sense. That's a pretty good return by Carr out to the uh, 30, almost a 30-yard return, I guess, first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Boy, it's weird to be in this stadium playing a football game, isn't it, Boo? Boy, it seemed like a while since we've been there. Taylor Logan is under center. Cumbie is the one back behind him, taking the pitch to the near side. Takes the reverse. Cumbie comes to the side. He finds a little gap and then is run down at about the 37-yard line. Coming up quickly was McCormick, who was not fooled by the fake reverse. He was not able to bring down Cumby, but a couple other white jerseys for the Yellow Jackets were right there behind him. And, John, on that play as Cumby picked up five yards, you see how powerful and upright a runner Quintus Cumby is. Yeah, and he made a good move on McCormick back at the 33. And, oh, by the way, I didn't catch the offensive lineman's name, but if you're running in front of Craig Parks, don't stop running. He <laughs> got run over. <laughs> Logan is under center. He sends Sadat Carr in motion to the far side, setting up the throw. Pump fake. Now throwing the deep fade ball on the far sideline, looking up for the pass. It's intercepted, then dropped. Nice coverage downfield for the Jackets. Brady Gunn, who turned at the last moment to look up for the pass that was intended for Cleo Chandler. It would have been about a 20-yard gain. But Gunn there for the defense, and it brings up third down and five. I'm sure that's one Brady will tell you he should have caught. And uh, Chandler just turned into a defender that time. His gun had a better shot at it than, uh, than did Chandler. Split receivers both sides. High formation behind Logan. Logan drops back. Play action. Looking to throw out the flats. Has a receiver. It's caught. First down to the tight end. Making the catch with Sam Parker. On a little 10-yard out pattern, he picks up the first down tackled by Kendall Bryles. The pickup will go for 11, actually, on the play. And sets up first and 10 for Cleburne at their own 48-yard line. Yeah, and Kendall just didn't, didn't have a chance as Parker used his big body to shield off the defender and get through enough for the first down. Logan again under center for Cleburne. Cleveland first and 10 at their own 48-yard line. Draw play coming to Cumbie. Cumbie will hit by McCormick first and then a whole host of other jackets as he powers forward for about five yards. What's interesting to watch about Quintus Cumbie so far tonight, John, is that it looks like he's not going for very much, but by the time he gets tackled, it's five yards downfield. The offensive line for Cleveland, we talked about, not very big, but they're getting a good push forward right now. They are. That was just a great read by McCormick as he just shot right into the hole, made the arm tackle just as Cumbie crossed uh, midfield. Here in the first quarter, 0-0, Steve Milling, Cleveland, first drive of the game. Cleveland on offense. Logan under center, the one back behind him, offset eye to the near side. Play action, setting up is Logan. The left-hander looks to throw the deep ball. Has an open receiver. It's too much to the near side. A flag is thrown late. 20 yards behind the play, and this may be some type of defensive holding farther up the field. We'll wait and see. The intended receiver was Joey Rainbow. Browse had coverage, and Rainbow had a couple steps on Browse at one point. Oh, if the quarterback makes a good throw, that's a touchdown. It will be offensive oh, pass interference no, it wouldn't, no, it wouldn't have been. <laughs> against Rainbow, and maybe that's the reason he had three to four steps. Yeah, I think you're right, and he just... He just kind of did a, uh, just shoved him off trying to run the park like Dennis Parker. He just, he just waves at the officials like, go away from me. That's not, oh, that official has something to say to him, too. And then uh, Parker gave him a little finger like, I'm telling you what, you better not look at me that way. <laughs> That's right. He just blew him off real quick. Offensive hey. pass interference will take the ball back to the 36-yard line, and that's where they will have second down. I'm sorry, John. And uh, those offensive pass interferences, big, big calls, as we saw last week in the uh, Brownwood game. Second down and 24, Cleaver now, as the ball is spotted actually just outside the 36-yard line. 9.59 to go here in the nation's bank first quarter. Steamwell zero, Cleaver zero, first drive of the game. Logan is under center eye formation behind him with Whitehorn, the fullback. Cumbie is the tailback. Give it the draw. Check that. It's Sadat Carr. Sadat Carr goes up the middle for about two yards, and that's it as the jacket defense stiffens. Two 
Lewis Cumbie. All right. It's yeah. Quintus Cumbie. Yeah. But that car is number one. That was number two carrying the ball. Yeah, now he's coming out. You know why sometimes people ask us, what game are y'all watching? Yeah, it's, that's right. It's, right it's there. stuff like that. That's right. right. You're exactly right. Well, they just tried to see if they could maybe steal something up the middle there on a little delayed draw. And, uh, boy, the, right now, the interior of the line for the Steamville Yellow Jackets not giving up a lot, but it's maybe three or four yards, and that's it. Third down at 20 once again for Cleburne. Logan is under center. No backs behind him. Straight drop for Logan. In a rush. Now we'll throw the deep fade pattern on the far sideline. Up for grabs and then good defense on the play, I believe, by Mercer on the far sideline who stood in front of the would-be receiver, which was Joey Rainbolt. And tonight, John, we have seen jacket defensive backs be in excellent, excellent position to keep the receiver off to the sideline and between them and the quarterback to have a chance to make a great defensive play. Well, we don't have the fastest defensive backs in the world, but we've got some pretty quick ones. And if Taylor Logan's going to put that much air under the ball, he's not got a chance tonight. I mean, he's, he's, he's just putting it up like a punt. Kate Smith will be back to punt for Cleveland, a barefooted punter who's also the kicker. We watched this man in pregame. He can boom it. The snap back to him is a good one. The kick is away. Big, booming, spiraling kick that will chase Carlwell back to his 21-yard line. He will fair catch on the play. And into that pretty stiff wind, that was a 40-yard kick with no return and excellent hang time. So you saw the boot on that young man, Kate Smith, as the Yellow Jackets of Stephenville start first and 10 at their own 21. First time you said that, I thought you said Kate Smith. God bless America. Former uh, Charlie's Angel, is that right? No. No. <laughs> That's Kate Jackson. Yeah, there you go. Who's Kate Smith? God bless America. Oh, sorry, yeah. singer. Excuse me. Yeah, singer. <laughs> Jackets on offense. Luke under center, two backs behind him. Pitch to the far side is Hunter. Hunter looking to cut up across the 20 to the 25. Run out of bounds at about the 20. Six-yard line, a pickup of close to five on the play. Probably closer to four is actually the spot. It'll bring up second down and six for the Jackets outside the 25-yard line. Well, and a uh, good uh, tackle there by Julius Jenkins. As you said during pregame, he's one of the best defensive guys on the field for them. And he ran toward the sideline, made a good arm tackle on the uh, runner. Cleveland with a lot of people coming in off the field. Pitch to the near side is Carwell. Carwell in some trouble. He'll get to the corner. 25, 30, going out about 31 yard line. A flag is thrown, and this one's coming back as the back judge did a nice heave with this one, throwing it about 20 yards toward the line of scrimmage. Jimmy Ferrasso had a nice takedown on the corner. <laughs> Good WWF move as it is holding against Stephenville. It'll be a spot of foul violation. But interesting, on the play, Cleburne, right before the snap of the ball, substituted about four people, and there was some confusion on who was supposed to come off the field. It was a big time for a good play for Stephenville, but they're guilty of the penalty, so it'll back the Jackets up, and they will have second down and long upcoming. Well, the bad thing about it is they, were, they, didn't, they couldn't figure out where, where the spot of the foul should go from. They don't have any idea where to mark the ball. They well, finally decided we'll just put it at the 23-yard line. And nobody protests, we'll leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> so that will set up for the Yellow Jackets, second down and about 17. You don't want to don't want to start off your first possession like this. Not the 23, it's actually the 17-yard line. Play action, Luker looking to throw. Out in the flats has Carwell. Carwell can't make the play. It couldn't have gone for anything anyway because out there quickly... Well, it's number 80, Robert Jones on top of Cardwell. It sets up third down. Now, what officially is, it's going to be third and 14. Yes. I'm, I'm reading the scoreboard, and I need to start just looking at the field myself. Yeah, that was, uh, that was defended very well as they put Jones uh, on Cardwell as he ran out. And pretty obvious what that play was going to be. And just trying to get Cody out there with a blocker in front of him, see if he could break something. Double wing back look, two receivers far side, one to the near side. Luker is in shotgun formation. Luker rolls to the far side, flag down on the play. Luker oh, still man. looking, and he will be sacked all the way back to the 12-yard line. And this is a play where the referee will call illegal motion against Stephenville. He hadn't seen this, obviously. Well, that's a bad call. Well, the problem is, is that Luker goes in motion at a quarterback. Most referees have never seen that. The first instance is to do is to throw the flag. Well, we need to get that cleared up now. A captain probably needs to go talk to the referee and say, hey, you know what? The quarterback can be in motion as long as he's the only one on the field. The flag is, de excuse me, the penalty is declined because of the sack. I think Coach Wiles is trying to get his attention right now. 
So guard side will run out for Bryles, it seems like momentarily afterwards. He will get in a wing back position. Snap back. Kick is away. Shank punt a little bit that will go out of bounds. Not a good kick for Dempsey as there's a flag down. And there's a chop block, I think, against Stephenville. There is. That's against the up back. That will be Kendall Bryles who the flag will go against. And the official is, uh, we have another case like we had the other night, Boots. The official is walking the sideline waiting for the referee to tell him where to stop. And he has no idea because the official and the referee was too adamant. Look, they don't have any idea where to spot the ball right now, Boots. Look. The referee did not give any indication to his side judge on where the ball went out of bounds. That's two weeks in a row we've seen this because the referee was so adamant about wanting to make the call in the backfield, he forgot his responsibility on watching where the football went out of bounds. They're going to get the ball for 30. He finally just quit walking at the 30 yard line. That will be credited as a punt of how far? 17 yards. Ooh, and Evan had the wind behind him on that punt. Boy, that's just like when you hit the golf ball right in the hosel of the club. Shank straight to the right. So Cleveland will have excellent field position at the Stephenville 30 yard line. 8.05 to go in the Nation's Bank first quarter. 0 0 our score as Logan again under center for Cleveland. Come be in the backfield. Play action. Looking to throw. Logan across the middle has a receiver. The ball is caught at the 22 yard line. A scooping catch is made for Cleveland. Number 88, Jordan Brinkley makes the catch. Pick up on the play. Actually, the 24 is where the spot is, so it will be a pickup of six. A long three yards needed. It's going to be time, I think. As Logan is under center. Cumbie again is the tailback as one man comes in motion to the near sideline. Logan handoff over left tackle. Cumbie powers his way forward inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. That'll be enough for a first down. Running on that left side behind Landon Ledbow at 219 pounds and also Sam Parker, the 6 foot 200, 205 pounds tight end. Picks up a first down for Cleaver. Cumbie just lowered his shoulder and uh, Hodges lowered his. That was quite a quite a collision at the 20 yard line and uh, Cumbie fell forward just as you said, just enough for the first down. Well this game certainly has an uneasy feel to it. The way it's began you would have hoped the Yellow Jackets would have come out shooting on all guns but certainly it has not been that case so far. Logan is under center, no backs behind him as Cumbie goes in motion. Throwing the ball on the far sideline over the head of the intended receiver Joey Rainbow on the far sideline. Good defense on the play by McCormick who was over there also for the Jackets at cornerback on the play, Justin Monk was out there as well. You know, Boots, uh, Logan, you talked about is a, is a southpaw, but he has not looked comfortable throwing to the left side of the field. Everything to the right has been just almost on target. Which is unusual. Yeah, I mean, he's throwing, throwing to his strength and throwing high or just rainbow in the thing every time. He rainbowed it to rain bolt that last time. Pretty good one, Logan. Hand off over left side. Being stood up at the line of scrimmage is Cumbie, and what a great tackle on a one-two punch is made for the Jackets by the strong safety Mercer and then McCormick to clean and finish him. So it'll fit up third down and 10 at the 20-yard line. Boy, that was the old high-low right there, and you're exactly right. B.J. Uh, hit him low with the shoulder around the waist, and then, as you said, uh, uh, McCormick came in up top and just drove him to the ground, and, boy, they didn't get anything on that. Might have lost a half a yard. Third down and 10 officially is the spot at the 20. Logan under center, two backs behind him. Split receivers to both sides. Tight end look to the left side. Logan still under center. Play action, setting up, looking to throw. Throwing to Cumbie. Cumbie is behind him. He was wide open at the five-yard line. He had gotten behind the defense at Cumbie. Mercer had coverage behind Cumbie. And a better pass from Logan, John. That's a touchdown. Boy, they should have scored on that play. Is, uh Cumbie just kind of did a little loop out of the backfield, and uh, and it was yeah, and he kind of faked the out, and then went it went up, and Mercer didn't go. He went on the fake and didn't go with the up, and again he threw it over the wrong shoulder. Not a good pass. Kate Smith will come on to attempt what will be a 37-yard field goal as Logan, the quarterback, is the holder. This man has got plenty of leg strength, if it's true. Waiting on the snap is Logan. It is down. The kick is on the way. It is up, and it is 
No good. He pushed it to the near sideline. Wind might have had a little bit of something to do with that. The jacket defense stiffens and holds, so with 6.10 to go in the Nations Bank first quarter, we're still knotted at zero, and the Steamville offense will begin first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Wow. Well, that's two bullets they've dodged here. They got a uh, pass interference, offensive pass interference penalty when it looked like Cleveland was driving. They didn't miss that field goal, as you said. Plenty of leg out of the uh, kicker for uh, Cleveland, and that is uh, Kate Smith. But uh, I think you're right, Boots. I think the wind had a little bit to do with that because it is a little bit of a crosswind, and that was the side he missed it to. Booker is under center, two backs behind him. Straight hand off of the left side. Hunter, Hunter will go forward for two yards. And you see a decisively different personality of this jacket offense, including the second half of last week. And as this week, this game has opened up as well. It's very run first, pass second which is exactly opposite of what we've seen early in the season. Julius Jenkins, the linebacker, again, on that stop, and you're exactly right, Boots. It's almost like we're going to establish the run to set up the pass. Car Cardwell now comes to the near side with double coverage. Twins to the far side, one receiver to the near side is Cardwell. Pulling out the flats is Cardwell. Cardwell makes one man miss. He comes to the 21, to the 25, and knocked out of bounds at the 27-yard oh, line. That should be a flag. No flag as Cardwell was hit pretty late. But it will be a pickup of seven on the play, so it'll set up now third down and about three, a short three needed. We'll make it even two as he gets a pretty favorable spot out past the 27, almost to the 28-yard line for Cardwell. Third and a long two for Stephenville. Ball at their own 28, 529 to go in the Nation's Bank first quarter. 0-0 our score. Stephenville really needs to pick up first down, keep the ball moving here. Twins to the near side, split backs behind Luker. They split out of that, now one back behind Luker. Booker handoff over the left side. He goes to Ferrosis, who dives forward to get three yards and the first down. And Jimmy Ferrosis, who last week established himself, picks right up where he left off then and gets a nice three-yard gain to give the Yellow Jackets of Stephenville a first down. Well, I mean, what's it worth to your football team, Boots, when you need two or three yards that you can run it up the middle and get it? That is so valuable to keep the chains moving. First and 10 for Stephenville. Ball out at the 31-yard line. Boy, you'd really like to see Steamville open it up, but you heard our Bryles in the pregame interview. We're going to make a workmanlike effort tonight. That may mean more ball control. Play action. Luker coming to the near side. He's in trouble. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that will be about it. It was a play action fake in which Luker faked the dive, turned around, and two of the Yellow Jackets from Cleburne did not even pay attention to the run and went straight after Luker. Yeah, and that, uh, that, of course, is just, you know, a new wrinkle to give them something else to think about. That, uh, that only picked up a yard, but it might be more valuable later on. They're only rushing three now, it looks like. And it looks like there's 12 men on the field for Cleveland right now. Count them quick for me, Johnny. Luker is in shotgun, three to the near side, one to the far side. There is 11, thanks, Jay. Luker setting up in shotgun, looking to throw the deep ball on the far sideline. Has card well, it's up and knocked away. Is it caught? What a great catch! Oh, Cardwell took it away from the defensive back at the 29-yard line of Cleburne. Wow, what a catch for Cardwell. He went over Cleo Chandler, fought him for it, took the ball away from him, and Stephenville has a first down. There's no way Cody Cardwell should have caught that pass. No way he should have caught that, but he did. Oh, man, what a great throw from Luker, who put that one in the air about 45 yards on the strike in the air. Actual distance is 49 yards, so it was actually closer to 55 on the throw. And it looked like Cleo had perfect position. He was going to knock the ball away, but somehow Cardwell went over the top of him, wrestled the ball away from him, and makes a great catch. Now Luker again in shotgun, trips to the far side, one to the near side. Giving the inside trap to Hunter. Hunter gets down to about the 26-yard line. A pickup of two on the play, making the tackle is Julius Jenkins, the man we talked about. Comes in six foot 230, the most dangerous man on that Cleveland defense. And as you look at Julius Jenkins, look to the sideline as the backer to pick up the defense. Definitely has that football player look to him. Boy, you just like to see your linebacker just step into the hole like that, Boots, and that's what he did. If he doesn't make that tackle... Hunter might run for 10, 15, maybe go all the way. Second down and seven for Stephenville. Luker under center. He sends Hunter in motion to the near side. Throwing out to Hunter. Hunter has some blocks across the 25, down to the 20, and brought down right at the 20-yard line. It'll be about a yard short of the first down. A pickup of about six on the play on the little swing pattern out of the backfield to Hunter. 
3.30 remaining in the Nation's Bank first quarter. Our score, Stephenville 0, Cleveland 0, but Stephenville's definite deepest penetration of the night at the 20, having third down and a short two or a long one, depending on how you want to look at it. It's three completions in a row for Luker. He's three out of four here early in the ball game, and he's 61 yards, and he is in sync right now. Luker with Ferrosis behind him. Ferrosis takes the handoff. Gets down to about the 19-yard line. It's just going to depend on the spot whether he got enough for the first. It's going to be very close. It is a first down for Stephenville. Well, that's, again, just great push by the interior line, especially Alvarado, uh, Doty, and uh, Collier, and uh, and then Jimmy Frost again. He's kind of like the... He's kind of like your designated hitter coming in. The battering ram and yeah. hitter handles the more finesse running. Colossus comes back in the game with the other fullback, Tinklenburg. Well, now it may be just fire football right here. Tinklenburg and Colossus behind Luker in the backfield. Luker, play action. Looking to throw across the middle. Has Cardwell almost makes the diving catch in the end zone. It was just a hair low was the pass. Cardwell on a inside slant pattern was open momentarily, but the window for an open pass to get there was very quick. Well, and I tell you, you know, when he dives across the ground like that, he's as fast flying as he is running. <laughs> Superman. He just goes for his bottle there. Uh, as you saw how he picked up that big fourth down last week against Brownwood on the first down he made on that diving catch inside Absolutely. the five. Yeah, that had a lot of look to it there. And Roy Kellen throws it in a perfect spot. If, if Cody doesn't catch it, nobody does. Luger under center. Play action. Rolling to the far side. Setting up. Still looking. Still looking. Throwing out, finds the receiver, Cardwell inside the 10, down to the 5. And a flag is down, or is it just paper blowing in the wind on the 10-yard line? I think it's paper. It's just paper, so it will be first and goal for Stephenville, and Luker showing incredible composure, waited, 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 and then found an open receiver. And that's a, a play that unfolded right in front of uh, Steve Ross. We'll, uh, we'll go to him in just a moment uh, after, after they score here on this play. And, uh, <laughs> You know, I mean, Kelly Luker's got a love of receiver like Cody Cardwell. He came back, you know, to help out his quarterback there. Luker is under center. Three backs behind him. Pitch to the near side. Hunter. Hunter trying to cut up to the five, to the four, and he's toppled at the four. Woo! Head over heels was Hunter. Let's go to Steve Ross on the sideline, who had an excellent view right in his own living room of the Cardwell catch. It's a great catch. I see a great route and a great throw on the incompletion of the end zone before that. Kelly Luker threw that ball where it was either going to be a touchdown to Cardwell or nobody. And hey, this just here, congratulations to Jody Gillespie and the Super Bowl Hunter Beach. They defeat Cleveland tonight to stay at top first place in District 6 play in volleyball, 15-3, 14-15, and then the win the rubber match, 15-13. All right. Thank you, Steve Ross. Also, congratulations to the volleyball head coach, Fran Campos, who keeps the bees rolling in district. Now, Luker, inside fake. Rolling to the far side, looking to throw, still looking. Now he'll run. Five to the goal line to the end. Yes, touchdown, Kellen Luker. The senior signal caller took it himself from the five when he saw no one was open. He gets just across the goal line, and Stephen Mill strikes first. Six nothing with 141 to go in the nation's bank first quarter. Boy, we might have Steve Ross to go there and check on that. I'll tell you, Julius Jenkins laid a big time hit on Kellen Luker in that. I'm glad to see him up and walking off the field. Ooh, that was a big pop. J.W. Boren getting set to kick. Snap back, hold down. The Davids Mattress World extra point is up. Check that, it's a fake. Thrown in the end zone, it is no good. I got picked out, I'm trying to do what I'm supposed to do there, Steve. Jackets went for two, it is no good. The pass was out of the end zone. So with 1.41 to go here in the first quarter, it's 6 nothing. Stephenville back in one minute on KSTV. There's a new star in town, Techstar Ford Lincoln Mercury. Come see the difference for yourself. New owners, anxious to win your business with the best possible deals. New hours, open weekdays till 7 and now open Saturday till 6. And most of all, new attitude. You'll love dealing with the friendly people at Techstar. If you don't buy from us, it won't be because of the price. Techstar Ford Lincoln Mercury, Stephenville. Hi, I'm Tim with Greenmaker Nursery. No landscaping job is too small or too big. From bedding plants to trees and shrubs, we can make your home more beautiful. Stop by or give us a call. Rock in 
Cleveland, Texas. Stephenville, six. Cleveland, nothing. Johnny, that last scoring drive. Boy, what a drive it was. That's the kind of drive you like to see Stephenville put together. 12 plays, Boots, 80 yards to 4 minutes and 31 seconds. It was finished off by Kellen Luker, who uh, ran for 4 yards for the touchdown. On that drive, Kellen Luker goes 3 of 5 on the drive and put together a, a, just a masterful calling play there. That scoring summary brought to you by River North Small Animal Hospital. After this return, we'll go to Steve Roth and talk about the touchdown play. J.W. Boren's kick is away. High end over end kick that will be taken by Cumbie at the 15. Up to the 20, to the 25. A little traffic escapes 26, 27, up to the 30-yard line. And that's where Cleaver will begin first and 10. Steve Ross, you had an excellent view of that touchdown. No, we said not have quite That was just an illusion. I guess the touchdown makes you shake the cobwebs off a little bit quicker, but Kellen Rooker did get lit up right at the goal line. Credit the senior quarterback for putting his head down. Only bad thing to come out of that, the David's not to throw that extra point. No good. Boy, and I got tricked on it. I was so ready to say it the way yeah. it was supposed to be said. Yeah. Demo runs the fake on me. Interesting call there going for two. All right, Cleburne comes out first and 10. The ball spotted at their own 30-yard line. Stephenville 6, Cleburne nothing. One and a half to go in the Nation's Bank first quarter. Logan is under center. Company is the tailback. Straight drop for Logan. Looking to throw. Looking to throw the deep ball on the far sideline. This one's up for grabs, and it will be out of bounds. Good coverage back for Harris and Bryles of the Jackets as they were trying to guard Jordan Brinkley on the play, and Logan's pass was thrown to the near sideline. And I just figured out, who Logan's passes remind me of? Who? Somebody on Sunday afternoon that's usually not a starting quarterback. Jason Garrett? Jason Garrett. He throws that high, high, deep ball that just throws that huge rainbow. Yeah, and you can get away with that when you can throw it 50 yards or 60 yards, but if you're going to try to run a 30 out... And it doesn't hurt having Billy Davis, Ernie Mills, and Michael Irvin uh, catching it for you as well. Point. Second down and 10 for Cleburne. High formation. Play action. Logan looking to throw across the middle over the head of the intended receiver. Oh, Flags no. down, and this ball is not even catchable. No. This is a horrible call. Not catchable. Look they at all the coaching staff saying the ball was not catchable, but you know what? The back judge that makes the call, he had guys got to make that call. Had no referee support to help him as far as yeah. whether or not it was uncatchable or not. And that was just one of those deals where their legs got tangled. Now yeah, the official saying something. No, you, that's a bad call. It is pass interference against Stephenville. Back on defense for the Jackets was Gunn on the play and had pretty decent coverage. Their feet got tangled up when the ball approached them, but that ball was way over the head of any intended receiver. The penalty will move the ball up to the 45-yard line of Cleveland, and that's where they'll have first and 10. Yeah, that's, uh, unfortunately, he wasn't watching that. He was watching the, the contact, and man, that's what he's supposed to do. But like you said, he's got to have some officials to support him and help him, especially the umpire. Two receivers near side, eye formation, and now the tailback come. He goes in motion to the far sideline. Logan hands the ball straight ahead to the fullback, going for nothing. Whitehorn, Jonathan Whitehorn, 32, took the carry for maybe one yard. And submarine. Jason Blankhart, excuse me, 34 was the fullback. The reason that play didn't go anywhere, submarining in on the play was uh, Parks, who just shot under. I've, seen, I've watched him do that a couple of times already tonight, Boots just trying to take the lineman out. Unfortunately for Cleveland, they ran right at him, and uh, he just upended him. B-A-L-B-L-A-N-C-H-A-R-D, either Blankhart or Blanchard. Whichever uh, one you'd like. Let's go with Blanchard. All right. The second down and <laughs> nine for Cleveland. Logan under center, and one of the jacket defensemen jumped into the neutral zone, and I think that's that new penalty this year where if you go into the neutral zone, well, let's wait and see. Cleveland's backing up. This might be a situation where the defense was, well, Parks jumped, and... They, he might be saying that uh, they drew him off size. Let's see. Up, oh, wave it off. Penalty's going to wave it off. Now, what is this? That is such goodness gracious. All right, it'll be second down and nine as the officials wave off the flag. Just kidding. Didn't mean it. 41 seconds remaining in the quarter. The clock is rolling. Second down and nine for Cleveland. At their own 46. Signal six. Cleaver nothing. Cumby is the tailback. Six yards behind Logan under center. Play action. Logan looking to throw out in the flats, has a receiver, catch is made, in jacket territory, the ball is loose, Stephenville picks it up, coming to the near side, he's handing the ball over to McCormick now running, and he is down, but getting the ball for Stephenville off the foul and was Jordan Carroll, he picked up the loose ball that was caught by Jordan Brinkley, Brinkley was tackled, Jordan Brinkley, who made the catch and then was tackled by... 
Yeah, you're right. You're right. It was uh, it was uh, Jordan Blakely and Gordon Carroll picked it up. I try to tell who <laughs> stripped the ball, Johnny. It might have been Browse. I didn't. I didn't. I couldn't see the number. From Jordan there. Carroll was the one that picked up the football, and he was being tackled. So then he shuttled the ball to McCormick. McCormick didn't go very far. Well, we're on our game tonight, aren't we? <laughs> it's, I'm still reeling off of last week. Uh, Sorry about last week. First and ten for the steam of the Yellow Jackets. Luker is under center. 18 seconds remaining in the quarter. And off straight ahead. Power look. Hunter coming to the near side. Finds some running room. Gets to the 45 to the 44 yard line of Cleveland. A pickup on the play of about seven. Did he go out of bounds? No, he did not. So the clock will continue to roll, and that will be the end of the Nation's Bank first quarter. Our score, Stephenville 6, Cleveland nothing. We're back in one minute on KSTV. Health Focus Foods in the Bosque River Center can speed up your metabolism, burn fat, curb sugar cravings, and help shrink your appetite. New Xenadrine and Medicuts are two of the state-of-the-art diet products that work very quickly and cost less than a dollar a day. These products are thermogenic formulas which help the body shed unwanted pounds and inches the natural way. Come by and let us show you New Xenadrine and Medicuts. Health Focus Foods in the Bosque River Center is open Monday through Friday 9 to 7, Saturday 9 to 6, and Sunday 1 to 5. <laughs> Parenting is a constant learning process. What you have to do is prioritize. Back in 88, Earl wanted to retire, spend more time with Tiger. My dad taught me. I met an American Express financial advisor. Dave is a personal friend of mine to this day. We trust each other because we got a track record. It's about making smarter decisions. And that's when dreams can happen. Call today to find out how we can help you reach your dreams. <laughs> Welcome back. Stephenville on offense to start the second quarter. Second quarter brought to us by Cook Lumber on the south loop. Luker under center in Cleveland territory. Fake handoff. Now it's a reverse to Hunter. Trying to get to the corner. He does. 45-40. Knocked out of bounds at the 38-yard line. A good pickup for the Zach Rabbit. Picks up first down yardage. Stephenville first and 10 at the Cleveland 38. We'll see if Steve Ross can get in among some of the defensive players and find out who made the strip a while ago. There's still some confusion on who caused the fumble. Maybe he'll have a possibility to talk to some of the defensive players and then get back with us. Good running by uh, Zach that time is, uh, is Jenkins at number 99, that linebacker we've called a number of times already tonight. Had a beeline for him, and uh, Hunter just beat him to the corner. First and 10 for the Jackets at the Cleveland 38-yard line. Luker under center. Play action. Frank setting up. Luker looking to throw. Has an open receiver. Quick catch made by Toby O'Neill. Down to the 23-yard line. A first down for the Jackets. A flag is thrown at the end of the play, and John, this might be face mask? I'm, I'm not sure. It looked like he reached up and grabbed something there. It might have just been defensive holding because he was all over O'Neal, the defender. It is going to be pass interference against oh, Toby O'Neal. Boy, that's wild. What? Oh, man. It's going to be one of those nights, I guess. Just because 88 in the pros does it doesn't mean here. Oh, Boy, that was a situation where Toby O'Neal just comes up Makes a fake to the center at 10 yards, plants, and comes to the near sideline, makes a great out pattern, yeah. and, and then was called for pushing off. You know, Boots, you might not see one of those calls in a season. We've seen two by the same officials in about a half a quarter. That's weird. Well, bring the ball all the way back into Stephenville territory at the wow. 47, so that ends up being a... 15-yard penalty. Well, 15 yards, but take away the pass coverage. I mean, the, the coverage on the pass, and it's about, even more yards than that. About 30-yard penalty, what it ends up being. Luker under center, throwing out the flats. Has A.B. Combs. Combs is in some trouble. He makes one man miss. Gets into Cleveland territory. Gets to the 49-yard line. A pickup of about four on the play. That's a play that had... Uh, Really no blocking. A.B. just got what he could get out of it. <laughs> I was trying to figure out a way to say that. I just Two meant. jacket receivers were out there, and they just kind of went right by the defenders. Yeah, man. That was... Combs may talk to them a little bit after the hey, game. Come on, guys. Work with me here. Second down in 24, Stephenville. Looker in shotgun, standing at his own 45-yard line, has Hunter standing next to him in shotgun. Trips to the near side. One receiver far side. Now yeah. flags come down. Delay again. Delay against Stephenville, and this will... Negate that last gain on the catch. Oh, two big penalties on this on this drive alone. 
where Seaville just has been in this situation for the last couple of weeks. It's either big play or we're shooting ourselves in the foot. It's hard to get any momentum this Stephenville team has had here offensively over the last two weeks. Let's remember now, this was a drive that had gotten down to the 23-yard line on the completion to O'Neill and then the pass, the pass interference. Booker under center, sends Evan in motion to the far side, throws out to Carwell over his head on the hot pattern. Cardwell was open at the 40-yard line at Cleburne, but Looker threw it over the head of Cardwell, and so it'll set up now third down and 25 for Stephenville. And that's a play that's been there all year long, and uh, it, it was open that time. I don't know if it would have got the 25 needed, but it would have been close. Pass just a little. Had to make the. Safeties on the play. Trips to the near side. Twins to the far side. Luker in shotgun. Setting up. In some trouble. Flags down. This play will probably come back. It's thrown out. Finds Carville at the 38. 35. Gets to the 30 yard line. Great effort for Carville, but this one will come all the way back. Man, these guys are going to throw a flag. We may be here until morning. I've got to go somewhere. All right. It is already a few minutes after 8 o'clock. We're just kidding. It will be holding against Stephenville. And they got to take the penalty. It's illegal receiver against Stephenville. So this will back the Jackets up even farther. Johnny made a great point at one time. Stephenville was at the 23-yard line. Man, now, this point. drive from that point has gone backwards. It's going to go all the way back to the 29-yard line, Boots. Spot of foul is, was the 39. Gee, 48 yards. Stephenville has marched backwards via the penalties since the catch down to the 23-yard line. Do you hear the Cleburne fan cheering the referee, I guess, as it's now third down and 40. 43. Oh, excuse me. Once again, I'm just reading the scoreboard. Don't go by that. All right, I don't want any more. Luker under center. Play action. Setting up, looking to throw a deep ball. Has Hunter on the far sideline. It's just over his head. Hunter couldn't quite get to the football. The catch would have been at midfield. He may not have had enough for the first down, but it would have been a serious chunk if he had been able to catch the ball. Yeah, he, uh, he needed to catch that ball. It would have been about the 50. I don't know how much more he would have got. He had a guy coming down on him pretty hard. But like you said, that would have been some valuable real estate for Evett here. Evett is back to punt now, standing at his own 15, awaiting the snap. Back to him. Kick is away much better. Spiraling kick will chase Cleo back to his 32-yard line. Cleo Chandler makes the fair catch at the 32. The punt goes 39 yards in the air, and Cleveland starts first and 10 at their own 32-yard line. Steven Villetting, 6 to nothing over Cleveland. So what the uh, Yellow Jackets did there was uh, about kick to where they needed to go for the first down. <laughs> Got the kick back off the penalty yardage. So it'll be first and 10 for Cleveland at their own 32-yard line. 10-21 to go here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. What a big call that was on the offensive pass and a fair. Oh, it would have been first and 10 at the Cleveland 23-yard line. Twins to the far side. One receiver to the near side. One back behind Logan. Taking the handoff is Sadat Carr. Carr will be stood up after about a one-yard gain. Folks, guess what? Another flag down. The far side judge in front of the jacket bench, Stephenville jacket bench, dropped the flag. How many penalties, Jay, already in the game? There's been a bunch. There's a couple they haven't taken. Right. Seven that are there, and then there's about three that have been declined. Legal procedure. <laughs> I can't. Against Cleburne. <laughs> Mr. Cobb. Jay Cobb, who are you rooting for in this game? <laughs> not Cleburne. Former Rio or Rio, depending on if you're from there or not, Vista resident. Not real fan of the Cleburne Yellow Jacket football program. <laughs> yeah, well, we all have our rivals, don't we? <laughs> yeah, they declined it. Steve Mill declines it. It will be about a two-yard gain. The uh, man with the spot on the sideline on the down marker is a little generous over there where yeah. his number two is. Yeah. Logan is under center. Two backs behind him, offset eye. On a draw play, goes to Carr. Carr finds a little bit of running room across the 40. Powers his way up to the 43-yard line. It is a first down. So Stephenville deciding not to take the penalty yardage comes back to hurt him as Cleburne is able to get the first down. And you saw Mike Copeland on the sideline 
jumping up and down and screaming at his defense. Yeah, and, uh, you know, he carried, Carr carried defenders with him for really about seven, eight yards, and you know, that's, I'm sure that's what Coach Copeland is not happy about. 9.40 and counting here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Stephenville six, Cleaver nothing. Logan under center, same look with split receivers and offset eye behind him. Long snap count. Setting up, looking to throw, play action. Logan throwing out, has a receiver way over his head. The intended receiver of the play was Jordan Brinkley, and Brinkley, when the ball was about 15 yards behind him, got popped pretty good. But my take on that, John, is if you can call interference for it being when it's not catchable, when it's not catchable, you better be able to go ahead and get the receiver. <laughs> That's right. Ryan Harris and Kendall Brown was just laid him out from behind. He was blindsided, I guess would be a nice way to put that. But hey, if you're going to come out in the middle of our territory, that's what they're saying. You're going to get a hit. Second down and 10 for Cleveland. Ball at the 43-yard line of Cleveland. Near side hash. Cleveland in all black with gold helmet, white numeral. Jackets with the all-white look tonight with their Navy headgear. Under center, Logan. One back behind him, the fullback. Throwing out the flats. Has Sir Parker. Sir Parker. Sam Parker. <laughs> the tight end makes the catch. A gain of two yards on the play. I don't know. Sam may not be an Aggie or not. It'll set up third down and eight coming up for Cleveland. I was going to say, did he get knighted or what? I mean, what happened there? Is, is Sir Parker number eight for AM and m too? Yeah, I think he is. Right. Well, that's, I can get a little bit of slack on that one then. Well, Sam has a little different build than Sir Parker. I'll, I'll agree with you there. No taller than the center. 9.21 to go here. In the Cook Lumber second quarter, Stephenville six, Cleaver nothing. All right, you two guys go back. <laughs> no, you two guys look out. Cleveland's going to have to call a timeout or they'll have a delay of game. They uh -oh. do take a timeout. 9 13 to go. Look at that look Coach Berger gave one of his He's players. He's not real happy. 9 13 to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Steamville 6, Cleveland nothing. Back in one minute on KSTV. The single most important step in building any investment plan is getting started. If you have any questions about how to start or build an effective investment program, ask the investment representatives at Investment Centers of America. Whether you're thinking about an IRA, a small business plan, a retirement plan, or some financial issue, Investment Centers of America can help you find what fits you best. Investment Centers of America, Town & Country Bank Building, Stephenville. Investment Centers of America, we know the territory. Steel has been building quality chainsaws since 1926. Bill's Lawnmower Shop has been providing quality power equipment service since 1966. For an experienced team that can provide excellent service and reliable chainsaws, look to Steel and Bill's Lawnmower Shop. Welcome back. Logan under center, third down and eight. Play action, giving the draw in a lot of trouble. This and out, he escapes forward, gets to the 50 yard line, 49 all over the 45 yard line, it will be a first down. The dot car was stacked up four yards deep in the backfield, and the Jackets missed three tackles. And, John, I know this is a huge concern of the Jacket defensive coaching staff because when we watched the film from this past week's game, there were a lot of missed tackles at the point of attack, and certainly we saw it again there. Yeah, he should have been tackled at the line of scrimmage. ends up getting, uh, you know, about 12 yards. Logan under center, two backs behind him. Gumby back in the game, takes the pitch, takes the reverse on the far sideline, 45, 40, 35, 30, knocked out of bounds at the 28-yard line, and Steelville had no containment on the far sideline as taking the pitch was Gumby, found a lot of open running room. They hadn't had a lot of luck up the middle of the line, so they think, what the heck, let's go outside, and uh, you're right, no containment out there by the defense, and that was just a great call as that uh, boy when Gumby, when he gets the wheels rolling, he can punish a defender that comes up to tackle it. First and 10 for Cleveland. The ball at the 29-yard line of Stephenville. 8.40 to go here in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Stephenville 6, Cleveland nothing but driving. First and 10. Logan under center. Fake giving it to Gumby. And then a lot of trouble. Harmon brings down Logan for a sack. Back at the 38-yard line. And we need a lot more of that. Boy, Clayton Harmon just manhandled the guy in front of him who was 50, is it 53? Yes. That's a 5'11", 160-pound Tim Bankston against Clayton Harmon, 6'6", well, no 275. And I'll tell you what, if Coach says anything to me on film day, I'm going to go, Coach, look at the guy. <laughs> Crying out loud. I didn't want you know to put me in this position. <laughs> Second down and 18 for Cleveland ball at the 37-yard line. A loss of eight on the sack. 
Logan under center, eye formation behind him. Now Cumbie comes in motion to the near side. Setting up the throw, throwing out the near side, has an open receiver, but the fullback screen will go for a big loss. Back to the 34-yard line is Jason Blanchard, and maybe a little late piling on. You hear the Cleveland fans, but no penalty. He was still driving backwards. Well, that's just good team tackling there. you got to do that. I'm sure that, as you can tell, the fans didn't like it, but... Hey, that stuff goes both ways, don't forget. <laughs> a loss of four on the screen set up to the fullback to the near sideline, so it's third down. Johnny, help me, I'm not going to look at the scoreboard. All right, uh, 22. 22 is good with me. So third and 22 for Cleveland at their own 41-yard line. They must get to the 19. Logan under center, three to the near side, one back is Cumbie. Setting up Logan, looking deep downfield, throwing the ball on the near sideline. The receiver runs out of bounds. He's not eligible to come back in play, so it will be an incomplete pass, and that will set up fourth down, and the jacket defense has held. And he did get bumped by the cornerback gun, uh, and the fans are screaming about that, but when you're out of bounds, I, I think you can do that because he's not eligible. Well, if you're out of bounds, you get bumped. You're right. I don't yeah, think it makes that's, any difference. That is not at all. So in to punt now is Cade Smith. Boy, what a great uh, sack that was by Harvard. Just changed the whole momentum of this drive. 6 nothing. Stephenville as Cleveland getting set to punt from the Stephenville 41-yard line. Snap back to Smith. Smith pooch punt is away. The spiraling check that line drive kick will go into the end zone just barely. He had nice uh, English. back English on that, if you will. Backspin as it hit just one yard into the end zone, spun and stayed right there. If that ball hits about two yards shorter, Steve will start in first and 10 on their own one yard line. The yeah. punt does go 41 yards. Yeah, he, uh, he was trying to drop it right there. And he, as you said, he was very close to being successful in that punt because the backer, uh, the deep return guys had done what they're supposed to when it crossed their heads at the 10, they just got out of the way. And I thought he was just going to pooch the ball, but he is very effective with a tight, low spiral. Now back on offense for Stephenville. Pitch out to Carville. Carville trying to find a seam on the outside. Gets out to the 27-28 yard line. And Carville is so explosive in the open field as he picks up about eight on the play. Well, maybe uh, Steve had a good look at that one. I, I didn't have a, a very good look from my angle, but it looked like his Cardwell was running toward the... Uh, towards the sideline there. Looks like he might have got hit in the head with a maybe a forearm shiver or something. Just helmet to helmet 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 contact, Johnny. And Teddy Cardinal is a tough kid. He jumps back up and looks like it's an interesting look. It seems they're using him out of that long setback position tonight, but the Jackets are committed to running the football. Looker again under center. Sends Evan the tailback in motion to the near side. Play action. Gives the ball straight ahead for Ross. It's good running room out to the 38-yard line. First down, Jimmy Ferocis and the Steamboat Yellow Jackets. Give Jimmy 10 on the carry, maybe 11, depending on the spot. We'll go back to Steve Ross. Steve, did you ever get any indication from the defensive squad who made the strip while ago on the fumble? No, Bruce, I'm beginning to even wonder if there was a turnover, because all the defensive players I talked to and the TV guys down here from Channel 4 and the newspaper guys from the Empire Tribune, nobody saw anything. I think, well, I'm not going to say who it was, because I thought it was Kendall, but it might have been, uh, been McCormick. Looker is under center, play action, throwing out, finds Carver on the quick sleeve, across the 45, great move to the outside, 40, makes another move, gets out to the 35, down to the 32-yard line. 23 yards after the catch. Boots, I, I just happened to be looking where he was and followed him. 23 yards after the catch. What a great, great run by Cody. I think uh, Parker's going to call a timeout. Parker does call a timeout. John, let's keep it right here for a second to talk about that play. It's a play that was open earlier that Stephen was trying to go to where they put Cody at either a wing back or a real tight slot position. It's a very quick, hot pattern from Luker who hits just on the hash or in the seams. Carville running about six yards past the line of scrimmage. And then you're right. Cody Carville made several great moves. 29-yard pass, feel free to scream out at any point. <laughs> well, you're right, and he did. He made a great move, and then uh, when he saw he wasn't going to get any more down at about the 35-yard line, just dove ahead for for the extra three yards to get it down to the 32-yard line. And, and that is a play that they, they, they had gone to earlier, and uh, Kellen just overthrew it a little bit, and, boy, he was dead on the money that time. Dennis Parker chewed on his troops for a little bit. Then he, like, high-fived one of his coaches who came in and then took over the chewing. <laughs> So tag team chewing the Cleaver defense got right there. 
So it's now first and 10 for Steamville at the 32-yard line. And how about Cardwell at the very end of that run? Did you see him jump and leap out yeah. and get an extra three yards on the sideline? Absolutely. Luker under center, double tight end. Luke sends a fullback. Combs in motion to the far side. There's three receivers that way. Handoff going to Hunter. Finds a little seam inside the 25, down to the 24-yard line. A pickup on the play of about six, maybe seven. Nice to see that a lot of the yards and boots are coming right at the heart of the defense of this, uh, of this Cleveland team. You know, not only did I see Cody dive forward for that three yards while ago, I had just mentioned it. <laughs> Once again, you and I do not listen to anything the other one says, and I'll admit that. The only reason I bring that up is because I know people listening to this going, what the heck, didn't he just say did that? Did he just say that? <laughs> Second down and four for Stephenville. Luker giving the ball straight ahead. Finding about two yards, maybe three. It's going to be just short of the first down. It just depends on the spot. Yeah, it'll be about half a yard yeah. short of the first to pick up a two on the play. So third down and less than one coming up for Stephenville. Bless you. 4.52 and counting in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Stephenville six, Cleaver nothing. Stephenville at the Cleaver 23-yard line facing third down and one. Remember, this is a drive that started on their own 20-yard line for the Yellow Jackets. Luker sends Evan in motion to the near side, giving the ball straight ahead. Ferrosis. Ferrosis will power forward for one yard, and that's all Jimmy Ferrosis because he was stacked up at the line of scrimmage. He would not be denied. Picks up the one solid yard, gets the first. Robert Jones, we've called his name a few times. The defensive tackle on that side is the one that stuck for us is at the line. But credit Jimmy, as you said, he literally powered his way for that first down because he was stopped for no gain. And then after the initial contact, just shoved off the right shoulder of, uh, of Jones and got enough for the first down. First and 10 ball spotted at the 21-yard line of Cleveland. Luker under center, one back behind him is Hunter. Play action, Luker coming to the near side, is in some trouble, escapes one man, looking to run, he does. 20, gets down to the 18-yard line. A pickup of two on the play, and once again, one man coming in to get quick pressure is Robert Jones on Luker. You know, Luker has play action several times in this game, and usually when he play actions, he's very relaxed because he knows when he turns around, everybody's going with the runner. Well, three times tonight, he's play action faked, and then there's been a defender right in his face. Yeah, that's got to be a weird feeling when you turn around and you just go, yeah, hey, hey, you're, you're not supposed to be here. You're not expecting anyone there. Second down and seven. Three yards officially on the carry for Luker. Luker giving the ball over the left side. Hunter. Hunter trying to get to the sideline. He will be stacked up by Julius Jenkins. A great defensive play made by him. The back judge throwing a flag. Boy, that was like a breath of fresh air. We went about 15 minutes without a flag. I think you're right. Uh, this will be holding against Stephenville. Oh, man. I'm sure they'll, I would think they would decline this no. one, John. You want to move them out of field? Well, that is true, because that does make it more than a one-touchdown lead. Man, that is a big, big penalty again. But it does give the Jackets an extra down, as the spot would have been all the way at about the 18-yard line, but the spot of the foul was at the 18, so they'll bring the ball back to the 28-yard line. It'll set up second down, and the Jackets will have to get to about the 11. Mm. So 17 yards needed for Stephenville for the first. Second and 17, 331 to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Stephenville six, Cleaver nothing. Luker under center. Play action, rolling to the near side, setting up, looking, still looking, throwing way over the head of the intended receiver, J.W. Boren. He was down at about the 15-yard line. Boy, they had that defended well. There was three receivers out in the route there. Uh, Cody was up short. I believe it was T.J. Deep. And J.W., the guy that uh, Luker tried to get it to, really, I think Kellen just threw the ball away. Could have been. It sets up third down, and actually the spot is 18. They'll bring the ball out, and Jackets will have third down and long. Kellen Luker is in shotgun. He has A.B. Combs standing next to him. Now Combs and Bourne will split to the near sideline, two to the far side. And going in motion is Toby O'Neill about a half second before the count. And you think Toby O'Neill might have been a little excited about a deep seam pattern down the middle, going to be hit for a touchdown? I think you're right. Boy, do you feel stupid when you're the only guy that moves. You just kind of want to go hide in the hole. Well, and especially as open as it looks like he had a chance to be with the way the defensive backfield was set up for Cleburne. Yeah, I think they had the right play call there. There was a deep safety. Uh, Cumbie was over double-teaming Cardwell, and there was nobody up the middle. Stephenville 
now already has 75 yards and penalties in the football game, and it has terribly hurt the Jackets tonight. Third down, 23. Jackets all the way out of their own 30, excuse me, the 33-yard line of Cleveland. Play action, flags down. Looker looking to run. He'll go forward. He'll be brought down. Now he fumbles the ball. It's loose. No signal who's gotten it yet. It is Cleveland's football after the fumble. Now let's wait on the flag to make sure it was not offsides against Cleveland. I think we turned up field early on the motion. Well, you can't really blame that one on the offensive line. Luker had a long time to wait, and by the time he decided to run, he was hit pretty hard. It is illegal motion against Stephenville. The penalty will be declined, and so Stephenville on that drive will come away with no points. And they've gotten down to the 18-yard line boots and two penalties. For the folks that are not here, to remember what the feeling was like in the fourth quarter last week when the Steamville offense was having so much trouble getting things going, it's kind of spilled over, John, this week to this first half. Logan, under center, running the option near side, pitches out to Cumbie. Cumbie looking to cut up, makes one man miss, gets to the 30, up to the 34-yard line, and once again we see Stephenville defenders not being able to make a tackle the first man there it's a pickup on the play of about six well and Cumbie is the reason that they weren't able to make the tackle that time is uh, Monk went in for his ankles back at about the 27 and he did trip him up and slow him down but he fell forward on, on, right off to the 35 yard line so he picks up six a little of a mismatch Justin Monk 5'9 180 Cumbie coming in at about 6'2 210 so second down and four for Cleveland Logan under center high formation behind him Play action setting up now a draw play giving up the middle to Sadat Carr. Carr gets across the 40 to the 42 yard line. A first down for Cleburne. And Cleburne putting together a little run here before the end of the half and all of it coming via the ground game. Yeah, and they're, they're, I'm sure they're trying to just get some field position here and maybe try to throw a pass or two here in a minute as clock is running down. Remember, they've used two timeouts. One for almost a delay of game and then one again on defense when Stephenville was driving. So they only have one timeout and a little under two and a half minutes to go in the half. Twins to the near side, one back behind Logan. The one back is Carr, offset fullback look from Whitehorn. Now Carr goes in motion to the far sideline. Logan under center, long snap count. A flinch by the near side receiver, but no call. Logan looking across the middle, has an open receiver. It's over the head of the intended receiver, Sam Parker. Good coverage downfield by McCormick, who I think got a hand up and may have tipped that one away at the last second. Yeah, I believe you're right. That's who it was, and uh, you're right. He, uh, he, had, he had the seam, but well, Logan has not shown us a lot uh, from the passing game. I, I don't think they want to be in a position where they have to throw the football late in this football game, and that's why the Steve Yellow Jackets need to get something going on offense try to put these guys away. Second down and 10 for Cleveland. 6-0 Stephenville over Cleveland. 2.05 to go in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Logan under center. Straight drop. Giving the ball over to Cumbie. Cumbie tries to get a set. A great tackle in the backfield is made by your middle linebacker Jack Hodges. A loss of one on the play and that's textbook tackling for Stephenville. Sets up third down and 11 and with 150 and counting, you've got to wonder, Stephenville with some timeouts, maybe they start thinking about using them? Uh, they certainly will if they stop them right here, I'm sure. Well, you're right, it takes good tackling by Hodges. He just shot right up through the hole, made the uh, arm tackle, and Cumby never even really got started. He was trying to squirt outside around on the Stephenville side of the field. Never could get going. Third and 11, we see Logan in shotgun for the first time. Trips to the near side, one running back standing next to Logan. Logan setting up in the pocket, throwing, has a receiver caught by Carr, 45-40. First down for Cleveland at the Steamboat 40 yard line, and that's a play where two deep receivers just cleared out the zone. Carr turned underneath them, and Logan hit him with a good pass. Boy, Logan hit him with a pass, but he paid dearly as Harmon and Hodges came blowing in just about a half a step behind and knocked him to the ground. He'll, he'll remember that next time he falls back to pass. First and 10 for Cleveland at the Steamville 40 yard line. Two receivers far side, one receiver to the near side. One back in a full back look is behind Logan. Logan under center looking to throw the quick pass on the sideline through the hands of the intended receiver on the play Sadat Carr. And Carr may have heard footsteps of Brady Gunn. Yeah, I think you're right. And again, another high pass to the left side of Logan. I mean, you think that that is your strength. But you know, he could get the ball to him, but every time it seems like he's been high on that side of the field. Dennis Parker signals in the play. Interesting. You see in 
high school football to see an offensive coordinator signaling in offensive plays. Logan under center, two backs behind him, tight end look, split receivers both ways. Logan, play action, setting up, looking to throw on the far side, up for grabs, it's fall, it's caught and dropped. Oh, there was a case where B.J. Mercer was in great position to pick the ball off, but he just jumped too soon. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought he, was, he had tripped. But I think you're right. I think he just jumped too soon this time. But it's kind of like when you're going up for a rebound and you jump and you're trying to hang there and the yeah. ball's just up there on the rim and then you come down and the ball comes down past you. And it's a situation where Cleburne almost had a chance to catch the ball because even though Mercer had great position to pick it off, just didn't quite time the jump. Yeah, I now, thought that was going to be an interception when it left his hand. Third down and 10 for Cleburne at the Stephenville 40. No backs behind Logan. Logan jumps the quarterback. Yeah, somebody didn't know the snap count, I don't think. And they. I think everyone knew the snap count but the quarterback as he took one big snap out from under center and the ball didn't come with him. And what I'm more amazed about, John, is how long it took the officials to throw the flag on that play. I think they really couldn't believe what they just saw. <laughs> oh, yeah, we better throw a flag right there. So the five-yard penalty takes the ball back to the 45-yard line of Stephenville. Nothing. Steamwell on top of Cleveland. Boy, this game has gone just how Cleveland wanted it to be. A ball control offense for themselves and then able to keep the Jackets out of the end zone. Logan under center. Two receivers far side. One to the near side. That is Cumbie, the dangerous tailback split by himself. Logan under center. Setting up. Looking to throw. Now throwing back Cumbie way. Flags are down. Deep pattern is up and it's intercepted. The ball is intercepted by Gunn at the six-yard line. Let's wait and see on the flag. That's going to be holding. It will be face mask against Cleburne. That is declined. Steamer will take over first and ten at their own. Actually, the spot will be at the seven. With well, 46 wait. seconds remaining. And how many timeouts, Johnny, for Stephenville? They have two of them. Uh, all three. Oh, they have all three. Schools. All three timeouts remaining. Certainly enough time. You know what's... Uh, well, of course, you're almost out of time. I was going to say, you know, you might want to decline that penalty if it's a 15-yard penalty. And take a chance on what happens with the punt return? Well, field position is not that great right there, but you do have the football, and that's what's most important. Well, I guess they're thinking a, a punt play might take as much as 10 to 12 seconds off the clock. Yeah, and they would have third down again, wouldn't they, So Exactly. Yeah. So it's first and 10 for the Jackets at their own. Well, now they move the ball out to the eight-yard line is the actual spot. Luca oh, under case, center. They did right. Four to the near side, one to the far side. Luca the one back with Hunter in a slot right close to the line of scrimmage. Luca in some trouble. He'll get out to the 10-yard line. He wanted to throw the quick down the sideline line of scrimmage past to Cardwell, but two Cleveland defenders stood right up into the passing lane as the clock continues to roll with 32 seconds. And how interesting is this? that Steamville elects not to stop the clock. What does that say? Well, you're deep in your own territory. You certainly don't want to make a mistake. Maybe if you can break one here, then you might do something, but that's pretty good ball management, I think. Well, Art Brown certainly willing to go in at the half. Pitch to the far sideline, it is Hunter. Hunter tries to cut up at the 10, gets to the 15, to the 20, and knocked out of bounds with four seconds left at the 20 yard line. Three seconds left in the Cook Lumber second quarter. Is it starting to rain? Yeah. yeah I, I see the umbrella up. starting to come out. So the rain starts to come here. Ball is spotted at the 21-yard line. Oh, it is coming down pretty good right now, Boots. If you look at it, it's a, it's a good bit. Get out of, the, out of the glare. You're right. It's coming straight down, too. So it's first and 10 for Stephenville at their own 21-yard line. Three seconds remaining here in the first half. Stephenville 6, Kluber nothing. Jackets will send trips to the near side. One receiver to the far side is Cardwell. Hmm. Think this one might go that way? I think it may go to yeah. Luker across the middle tries to find Combs on the sideline. It is underthrown, and that will be the end of our first half. Cook Lumber brought us the second quarter. Our scores at half. Stephenville 6. Cleaver nothing. Back in two minutes on KSTV. Hello, friends. This is Greg Bruner for Bruner Motors, sitting on top of my old friend Buck here. You may think this is a lot of bull, 
But I've got some specials that are no bull deals for you. GM certified used cars and trucks, which have gone through an extensive 110-point inspection and come standard with a 12-month or 12,000-mile factory bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty. On behalf of our 90 employees, come on down to any of our three locations for your no bull deal. And by the way, we appreciate your business. Your friends at Brooks Real Estate want to kick off a winning season by teaming up with the real estate professionals at Brooks Real Estate, the strategy that sells. Call Brooks at 965-5051. Easter Air has become the name synonymous with excellence in Erath County. We recommend a checkup on your central heat and air unit every six months to keep it running at its best. Offering no interest financing on Lennox Systems, Easter Air, at 968-6494 or stop by at 1011 North Graham, Stephenville.
of the SABC is to provide financial and moral support to the boys and girls athletic programs throughout junior high and high school. The money we raise helps the Stephenville Independent School District with the increasing expenses of athletics and the equipment that is necessary so that all students have an opportunity to participate. Membership also provides a way for parents and supporters to become involved in the building of the great spirit for which Stephenville Athletics is known. It takes a lot of involvement to accomplish all that we would like, and we need you. Offering Stephenville's largest selection of colors and styles, Danny's House of Carpet covers all of your flooring needs. Besides our wide selection, our friendly, knowledgeable staff can help you with anything from carpet and ceramic tile flooring to custom drapes, bedspreads, and professional installation. Serving the Stephenville area for 26 years and counting, 
Come by Danny's House of Carpets at 1670 South Loop for all of your decorating needs. Stephenville's going to start with the ball here in the third quarter, which is another good point. It takes a little time off the clock for our contestant. You know, we Red talked City about, Superstores. John, we talked about at halftime that the Stephenville offense has been much more methodical, if you will, in this ball game, not near so much as the quick strike capability. And you've got to ask yourself, is that by design tonight when you listen to a, a Coach Art Browse say before the game, we're going to have a very workmanlike effort? Yeah, and I had a, I had a uh, coach tell me as I was standing out in the hallway at halftime as the coaches made their way back to the press box. They said, don't worry, baby, everything's all right. So I'm not worried. I'm just, I'm just ready for us to open it back up. Well, and you may see that right here. The wind has picked up just a little bit, and uh, if there is some wind blowing, and, and there is, it'll be pretty much in the face of Stephenville to start the third quarter. Red City Superstore third quarter is almost underway. Stephenville six, Cleveland nothing. Kate Smith approaches the ball to kick for Cleveland, and we are away. Wobbly kick that hits at the 10, goes to the 5, then out to the 10. 15, Hunter tries to get to the corner, and he's tackled at the 12-yard line. Hunter that time tried to make it to the far sideline, did not come to the middle of the field with the starburst return, elected to take it by himself, did not make it to the corner, and a good tackle was made out there, John. Eric Neal, just open field tackle, and just knocked it. Neal, you put, you put both of those guys on top of each other, they might have been as tall as Shaquille O'Neal, maybe. I don't even think so. <laughs> it would be close. <laughs> Man, I tell you. That's he, a couple five fours yeah, right there. He, he really upended him. That was just a great, great uh, open field tackle. Again, the win has picked up just as we start the second half. First and ten for the Jackets at their own 12-yard line. Four receivers from the near side, one to the far side. Throwing out the flats to Hunter. Up to the 10, to the 15, out to the 18, to the 19, to the 20-yard line. A nice pickup on the opening play to pick up five, six, maybe seven, depending on the spot. Great blocking by O'Neal. Evett and Boren. They were the three receivers out there blocking and gave him a little bit of a hole to work with and picked up the seven yards. Seven yards for the Jackets, second down and three, and that's the offense I like. Yeah, baby. <laughs> you can get five to seven yards at a, at a, at a click. Yeah, it's not going to take you long to stick it in the end zone. Split receivers to both sides, two backs behind Luker. The tailback is Evett. He goes in motion to the far side toward Douglas, running the option. Giving the ball to Ferrosis. Ferrosis across the 20 to the 25 yard line. Enough for the first down. A pickup of almost five on the play for Jimmy. It's first and 10. Stephenville almost to the 25 yard line of their own. Here in the Rent City Superstore third quarter, Stephenville six, Cleburne nothing. A little bit of a mismatch there when you had Steve down here on Chandler number five. They've got him listed at 5'8. Sure. You think? 5'6 five, maybe? 5'5? Five, five? Yeah. Uh, that is a little bit of a mismatch. Now they are playing a uh, deep safety, Walter Scott, number 22 now. Card will split to the far side by himself. Luker inside trap, gives the ball to Hunter, finds nice running room across the 31 to the 32 yard line. Luker just quick fake pumped out the card. Well, it throws the defense and quickly coming back inside on a trap was Hunter. He took the nice handoff for Luker and gets about seven yards. Man, that, uh, again, just a really a little bit of a misdirection play there as they're trying to spread that defense out a little thin in the middle boots. Let's look for that uh, seam pass maybe to come up here in just a moment. Cardwell is in a flanker on the same side as Steed and then two receivers on the far side. Cardwell goes in motion to the far side. Pitch out to Cardwell in motion. Cuts up 30, then back to the outside, and he'll be brought down for a loss. The ball is loose on the far sideline. No signal yet. It's all the way back at the 25-yard line. Man, I thought he was down up at the 30. Boy, I did too. The ball squirted out and comes all the way back to the 25-yard line. It'll end up being a loss on the play of about six yards, maybe even seven. All the original gain is wiped out, and that was one of those plays where Carwell decided that instead of cutting it up for two to three, he tried to make it to the outside, and when that happened, the pursuit caught up with him. Now, third down and 10, big play for Stephenville. Play action, Luker rolling to the near side, looking to throw out in the flat. Has Carwell, Carwell will be brought down for no gain. Maybe a gain of two on the play. And Luker that time with it being third down and 10 through a two yard pass to Cardwell. It'll set up fourth and eight. That was Scott again defending that. I told you about a moment ago, uh, the uh, safety. And uh, he just followed Cardwell all the way across the field. That was his guy. Evett getting set to punt. He stands at his own 15-yard line, 9.37 and counting in the Rent City Superstar third quarter. 
Punt is away, high kick that will be caught up in the wind. It'll hit just past midfield, bounce backwards to the 50-yard stripe. Actually, the 49-yard stripe of Cleburne is where that ball will spot. 24 yards on the kick from Evans. And that was deep into that wind. That, that wind was really strong, and that ball never did get to turn over. Evans had a tough night punting the ball after last week when he hit a 55-yard boomer against Brownwood. He's had a couple punts so far tonight that haven't traveled 25 yards. Boy, Cleburne has had great field position all night, Boos, and you just hate to keep putting your defense in situations like that. Three receivers to the far side, one back behind Logan. Logan under center. Pitches out to Cumbie. Cumbie with lots of room. 50 across the 45, down to the 42-yard line before he's run out of bounds. And you can almost see that one coming, John. As they had three receivers to the side, Cumbie took the pitch. Those three receivers drove off their defensive backs, and there was no coverage. That's the second time they've run that play tonight, and they've blocked it well each time. But Red City Superstore, third quarter contestant. On the night is Ricky Shockley, and Ricky, you need the jacket defense to stand up. Now as they have the ball, excuse me, Cleveland has the ball at the Stephenville 42-yard line. Second down and two, Logan under center. Running the option near side, pitches out to come behind pitch, but he handles it across the 40, down to the 37-yard line. A pick up the play of five yards, and a late flag comes in, so hold on. This may negate the first down, and what a nice job, John, that Cumbie did to take the high pitch on the option. Was that the referee that threw that flag? I think it was the side judge on the far side coming down. Great tackle by Browles as he just upended Cumbie. It's going to be illegal back. push in the back against Cleburne. And the fans cheer. Well, you know, and that's a, that's a tough call for Cleburne from the standpoint that was a long ways away from any of the action. Cumbie was going to make the yardage whether that block came yeah, or not. That's, that's what it is. And they're waving off the flag. Oh, my gosh. How in the world is that the case? When you go ahead and make the call. What? You make the call after discussing with the official, and then you talk about it for a little while longer, and then you walk away, and then come back and negate it. That's weird. I, I don't know. I've never seen that. I've seen them discuss it and then call it off. But I've never seen the official make the call and then go and negate it. Maybe they were going to say that it was after the play. Wow. Oh. Boy, it's been a tough night with the officials tonight with Stephenville. So first and 10 for Cleveland at the Stephenville 35-yard line. Play action. Looking. Looking to throw. Deep fade pattern on the far sideline. Over the head of the intended receiver and almost picked off by Bryles. That, playing his center field position, tried to come back and get the ball. That was almost offensive pass interference as uh, Chandler saw that he was not going to be anywhere close to the football and tried, I think that was Ryan Harris that he was trying to shove uh, uh, to get out of the way. And as you said, coming from the free safety spot, Kendall Browse came up and almost made the diving catch. I'm sure you didn't see the interior of the line, but boy, Harmon and Parks just destroyed the middle of that line that was trying to block for Logan. And, uh, he was lucky to get that pass off. It looked at first like it was overthrown. Kind of got caught up in the wind and came back to the middle of the field with that almost crosswind now. Logan sends one man in motion to the near side under center. Hand off over the left side. It's Carr. Carr has stood up at the line of scrimmage. Parks is the first man to get there with a bunch of other jackets right behind him. Jack Hodges and uh, Justin Monk as well. And you're right. There has been nothing up to the interior of that line. And I think you, I think Steve Ross said it best at uh, halftime. This is a... Uh, this is a football team, a defensive football team, that was a little embarrassed last week, especially with some of the running plays right up their gut at what they have, they felt was the strength of their defense. And they have really risen to the occasion this week. Third down and nine for Cleveland. Ball at the 35-yard line of Stephenville. 8-11 and counting in the third quarter. Stephenville six, Cleveland nothing. Logan is in shotgun. One man standing next to him is Carr. Setting up Logan, looking to throw out in the flats. Has an open receiver, the catch is made. Still running, 20, down to the 15, cuts back, 10, trying to come to the middle of the field, 5, touchdown. Breaking three tackles on the play was Cleo Chandler, and Stephenville just got burned badly. I thought he went down, but he went down with his hand and put, touched the ground. Boy, talk about your effort by that young man. Chandler, he did all that on his own after the great catch. He broke three tackles, including the man who had the coverage on him who should have made the tackle probably somewhere around the 25-yard line. 
broke that tackle, the two more, then made a nice cutback to pick up the touchdown. There's We're knotted at six, and here comes the extra point. And my, how big was it, Stephenville missing that two-point conversion. Snap back. Hold down. Smith's kick is on the way. It is up, and it is good. 7.52 to go in the Rip City Superstore third quarter. Our apologies to Mr. Shockley. No VCR tonight. We go to the break. Cleveland 7, Steamville 6. Back in one minute on KSTV. There are a lot of good reasons to have insurance. Whether you call them Michael or Ashley, Lexi or Scott. And because you want to be there for them, your State Farm agent is there for you with the Family Insurance Checkup. It allows you to see how your coverage measures up and pick the plan that's right for your family's needs. So call for your free Family Insurance Checkup today. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Who was voted the best tractor dealership in Erath County? Who carries products for the farmer, outdoorsman, and the family who wants the ultimate lawn? If you guessed Hendershot Equipment, you scored a touchdown. Supporting the Jackets for over 30 years. Bill Tomlinson, class of 67. David Tomlinson, class of 71. The Stephenville Funeral Home. Your family's friend in time of need in Stephenville. And welcome back. 7.52 to go here in the third quarter. Sorry, thought the David's <laughs> Mattress World extra point was only for Stephenville touchdown. Well, I'll tell you what, that David's Mattress World extra point, how big was that, huh? Right now, it's difference in the ball game. Cleburne leading Stephenville 7 to 6 and the bad thing about an underdog, the longer you let them hang around, the longer they think they deserve to be in the ball game and Cleburne is a fired up team and community right now. Well, who can blame them? Kate Smith getting set to kick off. Deep kick end over end that will chase Evett back to his 5 and now flags fly. Boy, Where? that's weird. Where's the flag from? Way back here. I didn't even see it. The official back in the back by the Stephenville end zone. What in the world is that? The referee stops, blows his whistle. What is that? I'm not saying this has been a poorly officiated game. I'm just saying that this has been a game that has been puzzling. so choppy and puzzling by the officials. What is, what is the call? I thought I saw him make a delay of game. Well, how do you have a delay of game on a kickoff? Well, you do. You have just so long to do it. Yep, that's what it is. But don't you wait for the referee to say, come on, and then you go kick? And if that's the case, yeah. you get 25 seconds. Well, I guess the... Wow, that's weird. Well, that, I, I, I don't know never, that I've ever seen. I have never seen delay of game against a kicking team to kick off. Well, they, they celebrated for a little while on the sidelines. Well, that may be true, too. Well, Stephen will get at least five more yards via the penalty to set up. Evett was going to take the catch at the five and turn around and run the starburst return. And who's 26 for uh, Cleburne? That's he's getting in Junior ready. Ramirez. He's having a big time out there right now. He's kind of the Deion Sanders cheerleader on this deep kickoff. Smith's kick is away. This kick will come down to Hunter. Bobbles it momentarily. Hands the ball to Evett, who then gives the ball to Carl. Big running room. 20, 25, 30. Makes the cutback and then loses his speed at the 35-yard line. Flag on the far side. There's a flag on the play, and this flag may come down at the spot. Yeah. Illegal handoff against the Jackets. Back at the 12-yard line. And they handed it off forward. Is that the case? I could not tell if that was what it was or not. Yeah. I know when Hunter came up and gave the ball to Evett, that looked pretty clean. And then when Evett turned and gave the ball to Cardwell coming in my direction, I thought that looked pretty good as well, but I certainly that's one we'll have to watch on the film. The illegal handoff will move the ball all the way back to the eight-yard line, and instead of Stemo having the ball on the 35-yard line, they've got it on the eight. Boy, so that's position. about a 17-yard penalty the way that works out. Field position is just killing the uh, Stephenville Yellow Jackets. It is a five-yard penalty against Stephenville for the illegal handoff, and it's first and ten for the Jackets at their own eight-yard line. Luker on a keeper across the 10, across the 15, out to the 20, cuts back 23-yard line. Luker faked the dive and then kept it around the corner. Great running room for Luker, who picks up close to 14 yards. First in Stephenville. Boy, it's nice to, you know, that you have that option with your quarterback who can get you out of a hole like that. Big pickup there of uh, 16 yards. 
First and 10 for the Jackets. Ball all the way out to the 24-yard line. 7.25 and counting here in the Red City Superstore third quarter. Cleveland 7, Stephenville 6. Pitch to the near side, Hunter. Hunter cuts up 25, gets to the 30. A pickup on the play of about five. It'll be second down and five. By the way, that last scoring drive for uh, Cleburne, five plays, 51 yards. Only took them a minute and 37. Uh, boots uh, Logan to Chandler on that 36-yard touchdown pass. That scoring summary brought to you by Texas Trucks. Second and four, actually six given on the pitch from Luker to Hunter. Ball just inside the 30-yard line of Stephenville. Luker is under center, two backs behind him. The tailback, Evett, goes in motion to the far sideline. Going out in the flats, finds Evett. The ball a little bit behind him, and he fumbles the ball forward, but they'll rule that it is incomplete. That's one Chris will tell you he probably should have caught. And, uh, boy, he, he paid for that, but we're not catching it. Well, it's one of those balls that if he doesn't sit around and have to juggle the ball, he can bring it into himself and prepare for the hit and move forward. So now it's third down and four for Stephenville. And Stephenville has totally gone away from the vertical passing game. We saw it one time earlier, the deep ball to Cardwell that was very successful, but we have not seen it since. Four receivers near side, one to the far side. Luker is under center. Throwing the deep fade on the far sideline to Steve. Steve goes up for the pass and cannot quite come down with it. It's almost like Steve stumbled momentarily. It'll bring up fourth down. Well, once again, a punting situation. Cleburne's going to get the ball in pretty good field position as they'll be kicking from the 30-yard line. Last punt went 29 yards into this win. Still six and a half minutes to go in this third quarter. Evett getting set to punt. Snap back to him. Kick is away. Much better kick that spirals and comes down to the 34-yard line. 35-yard kick for Evett as Cleo Chandler fair caught it at the 35, and the Cleveland defense holds again. Stephenville, through two and a half quarters, has been held to six points. Uh, it's just a it's just a game that they've just not been able to click all night long. Cannot get anything going. Unfortunately, the defense has kept them in this football game. Logan under center. Two backs behind him, split receivers to both sides. Now coming in motion to the near side is a Cleveland receiver. Logan hand off the side is Cumbie. Cumbie powers forward for about two. Nice uh, defense there. Jack Hodges, the first man there on the uh, spot, and then got uh, help from, uh, from Boone. Boy, the guy that's setting the ball marker, the first down marker, or excuse me, the... Uh, down box, marker. Box. That, that guy's got to be from Cleburne. <laughs> He's giving them about a half yard. Extra. <laughs> Every time Cleburne is a half yard, extra yard, closer to that first down, even though it doesn't make any difference with the yeah. first down stay the same. But Well, I think he's trying to get it on the other side of the official so he, he can see he's the He's trying to watch the game, <laughs> yeah. sure. Oh, you can't blame him for that. <laughs> Logan under center, running the option to the far side, pitching out to Cumby. The ball's on the ground. Check that car. Car picks it up and gets forward for positive yardage to about the 40 Three-yard line, and that's a dangerous play that worked back to the favor of Cleburne. Yeah, that's when you know things are going your way. When you can put the ball on the ground, it'll bounce right back to you, back in your own territory. As you said, that was that was dangerously close to being a turnover. Big third down now for the Jacket defense. Third down and one for Cleburne. Ball is out at the 44-yard line. They need to get just past the 45. 5.15 and counting here in the Rent City Superstore third quarter. Cleburne seven, Stephenville six. Logan under center, two backs behind him. Since the tailback in motion, the near side is Carr. Logan hand to the fullback. The fullback has stood up but gets forward enough for the first down. I believe that was Blanchard on the carry. It was. He gets one and it's enough for the first. Harris had him at about the 44 yard line, which would have been just short, but his body length, he laid out across the 45 to, I guess, officially the 46 yard line. As you said, he just had to get across the 45 for the first down. Well, and Blanchard is not a small man, six foot, 205, has a good fullback body for college, excuse me, for high school level, had enough to get the first there. So it's first and 10 at the 46, motion to the near side, two to the far side, running to the option to the near side, pitching out his car. He cuts back, makes one man miss, but not the second. McCormick 
doing a nice job running parallel to the line of scrimmage. Wraps up and throws it out court to the line that's down to the ground. A loss of one on the play at second down and 11. Good containment there by Carroll defensive end who pushed that ball back, uh, that play back inside. And then McCormick on the backside penetration there. And uh, again, he loses, well, he loses about a yard, Boots. Second down and 11 for Cleveland, 4-10 and counting. Cleveland 7, Stephenville 6 here in the Rent City Superstore third quarter. Comes now under, carries 47 yards. Now under four minutes. Logan under center. Cumby now in the game at tailback. Play action. Give the ball to Cumby. He stumbles. Gets forward. Breaks the tackle. 45, 46 yard line. It seems like a big gain for Cumby. It only gets two, but on the play, John, he was almost falling six yards behind the line of scrimmage. Boy, and I tell you what, that was close to breaking loose. He broke away from a couple of tackles. Justin Monk came in, wrapped him up around the ankles. He ends up only gaining it about a yard and a half. And boy, that was that that had danger written all over it if he gets away from Monk. It was very similar to what we've seen in the past, where a jacket defender was right there to make a great play, but couldn't quite wrap up. Now Cumby comes in motion, lines up as a receiver on the near side as Logan is in shotgun. Three to the far side. Logan snap count, setting up, looking to throw in the pocket. Throwing on the outside, a bad pass is underthrown to Joey Rainbolt. Rainbolt with a better pass on the out pattern is open momentarily. Could have made the first if the pass had gotten there from Logan. It is underthrown. Look at look at Dennis Barker just chewing on his quarterback. I got the guy open. We got the play, son. You got to make the play. Look at him. He's wearing him out. Boy, Parker line. having a good time with his quarterback on the sideline. Fourth down for Cleburne. Big defensive stand there for Stephenville. Boy, you're right. Taylor Logan took a chewing from Dennis Parker on the sideline. Kate Smith getting set. Snap back to him. Punt is away. Big, booming punt that chases Kendall Browse back to his 12. Runs back to the 10. Gets up to the 15. Finds the same 20. 25. Cut back 30. Cross to the 35. And the punter makes the tackle at the 30. Better job that he did that. If not. Did that. If not, Browse may score. 45 yards on the punt and 25 yards on the return from Bryles, who danced around a little bit, found a seam, and shot through it. Kind of let the containment just kind of run past him there as he just stutter stepped for a moment. Just a great read there by Kendall. And then, as you said, just shot the seam, and uh, he almost broke that one. He was about a block away from going the distance, which would have been about uh, 90 yards. First and 10 for Stephenville. Ball at their own 35-yard line. 2.57 to go in the third quarter. Stephenville 6, Cleveland 7. One back for Ross. It's behind Luker up under center. Play action. Luker setting up. Looking to throw. Throwing the deep ball on the far sideline. It's up for grabs and kicked off. 40, 45, 50 going the other way. It's Cumbie. Cuts back 40, 35. Coming to the near side of the field. He's going to score. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. 70-yard interception for Cumbie. And Kellen Luker, who coming into last week had only thrown two interceptions the entire season, has now thrown three interceptions for the year. That one results in a Cleveland touchdown. Almost looked like John Kellen almost put that one up for grabs. Yeah, he threw in the triple coverage there. That was not a good decision by Kellen, and I'm sure that may be just be a little bit of frustration. He had open over the middle. Toby O'Neill was wide open at about the 40-yard line, but chose to go the deep route. Boy, and Cumbie in the open field, that's a big man, and he can carry cover a lot of yardage in a hurry. Getting set, Cleburne the extra point, snap back, Smith's kick is on the way, it is up and good, and the Davis mattress point, extra point, is good. So with 2.40 to go in the third quarter, our score, Cleburne 14, Stephenville 6, we're back in one minute on KSTV. There's a new star in town, Techstar Ford Lincoln Mercury. Come see the difference for yourself. New owners, anxious to win your business with the best possible deals. New hours, open weekdays till 7 and now open Saturday till 6. And most of all, new attitude. You'll love dealing with the friendly people at Techstar. If you don't buy from us, it won't be because of the price. Techstar Ford Lincoln Mercury, Stephenville. Are you troubled by strange noises under your car? Do you experience feelings of dread in your drive shaft? Have you or any of your family suspected a spook, specter, or ghost in your machine? If the answer is yes, then don't wait another minute. Call the professionals. We're ready to believe you. Our courteous and efficient staff will take care of you whether you need new tires, strut, brakes, front end alignment, or just a spark in your spook. 
Trans Texas Tire, we're ready to believe you. Red City Superstore third quarter finds your Stephenville Yellow Jackets trailing by eight points now, 14 to six, and in back-to-back -back district games, Stephenville late in the third quarter has been behind. Kate Smith getting set to kick off. Kick is away, this one's a boomer. But it might go out of bounds, and I believe it does. It will go out of bounds at the five yard line. Smith had plenty of boot on that one to get through the back of the end zone, but he hooked it. Yeah, he got it up at that wind too, Boots, and you know that wind's blowing that direction. You know, after it's all said and done, I'm sure people are just going, what in the world is going on with Yellow Jackets? There's still only one touchdown behind. I mean, for all that Cleburne has done, they have scored 14 points in this quarter, sure. I think, though, the most shocking thing in this game so far, John, is that with 2.37 to go in the third quarter, Stephenville has managed only six points. Well, yeah, that's obviously the big step. But again, all you got to do is just march down the field now, put this one in the end zone, and you're right back in the football game when you go for two. Twins to the near side, one receiver to the far side. Luker is under center. One back behind him, Evett, goes in motion to the far sideline. Inside trap, handoff to Carmel. No, Luker on a keeper, cuts to the outside. 35, flags down, cuts back 40. Ball's loose, fumble. Cleburne has gotten on the football via the Luker fumble. Boy, he made a great move up the 30-yard line, faked one guy. Did you see there was a flag down? Check that. The ball went out of bounds. Luker, very fortunate. There's a flag down the line of scrimmage on the 30-yard line on the far sideline. Oh, I see it. Boy, Luker was almost back-to-back -back turnovers. Man, he is really mad at himself, too. Look at him on the sideline, Boots. Really talking to himself. It is offsides against Cleburne. Decline. Stephenville takes the 10 yards on the carry. First down, Stephenville at the 40. Woo. Yeah, Kellen is not happy with himself right now. I mean, you just need to settle your quarterback down. And don't put any more pressure on yourself than you already have. Again, you're only down one score. There's... This is football game a long ways from over. 14 minutes to go in the football game. Trips to the near side, one receiver to the far side. One back is Hunter. He now goes in motion to the near side. Luker looking to throw down the line of scrimmage. Has Hunter, tries to make one man miss, gets up to the 43-yard line, and then hammered. Boy, you know, John, the situation of what Cleburne is doing, why they've been so successful defending against the down-the-line of scrimmage pass is that on every play, the ends are going straight out. They're yeah. going right to the side of the receivers, and they're saying, you may beat me on the run, but I'm not going to let you beat me on what y'all have done all year well, which is down the line of scrimmage, wide receiver screen, if you will. Yeah, and you just, you know, Cody Cardwell's been pretty quiet in this football game. I think it's about time for 25's number to be called. Second down and seven, Luker under center. Play action now gives the ball to Hunter. Hunter gets forward, makes one man miss. Another 45, trying to get to the outside. Great block. And then Hunter fell down. Oh, no. P.J. Douglas made a well of a block to spring Hunter to the outside. He would have had an easy first down, and he tripped over that tall blade of grass. Yeah, boy, he's mad at himself. And boy, do you feel, you feel just ridiculous when you did that. Boy, that was a great comeback. Our block there by T.J. as he picked off his guy. I think that was Cumbie. So now instead of a first down, it's third and two for Stephenville. Luker is under... And the ball to Ferraz as Ferraz as Trotz gets out. Now Luker keeps the ball and he's thrown for a loss. If Luker would have given the ball to Ferraz, it would have been a first down, but he elected to pull the ball out and he's thrown for a six-yard loss. It'll be fourth down and Steve will be forced to punt. But at least now they're going to get some decent field position for the defense. As, uh, you know, they have got to, uh, they got to win this field position more here as we finish the uh, third quarter here in just about 40 seconds. Well, we got a timeout by Parker. He's screaming about something. We'll take a timeout with him. 43 <laughs> seconds remaining in the Rent City Superstore third quarter. Cleveland 14, Steamville 6. Back in one minute on KSTV. Health Focus Foods in the Bosque River Center has proudly served the cross timber areas for over nine years. Mike and his trained staff are here to show each individual how to manage their health care needs. We stock only products of the highest quality, backed with scientific research. They have no fillers, binders, yeast, radiation, or other allergens found in most store brands. Come by Health Focus Foods. Let us show you the natural way to good health. Monday through Friday, 9 to 7, Saturday, 9 to 6, Sunday, 1 to 5.
impact sign and banner has been serving the Stephenville area for over 12 years with superior quality sign work of every kind. We now can offer one day service on most banners and magnetic signs. We proudly support the Stephenville Yellow Jackets for their excellence in athletic achievement. Impact Sign and Banner is conveniently located on West Washington, just across from Taco Bell. At Impact Sign and Banner, we say, let us put some impact in your advertising. The Stephenville Athletic Booster Club wants to say thank you to Northland Cable for backing the jackets and generously providing the time for this broadcast. Your friends at Brooks Real Estate want to kick off a winning season by teaming up with the real estate professionals at Brooks Real Estate, the strategy that sells. Call Brooks at 965-5051. Oh, they got, oh, welcome back. It was fourth and six, and Stephen was about to punt, but a flag came in from the Cleburne defensive backfield. What is this? Illegal substitution. It's a, if it is a five-yard penalty against Cleburne, which first it down. is, it is a first down as it moves the ball to midfield, oh. and what a break for Stephenville. Ooh. Oh, man. That's a breakdown. Illegal substitution on a punt coverage team in which you had just called a timeout to make sure you have the right personnel in the game. They and now another, another flag one. comes down. They just got another one. As another illegal substitution is made. They got 12 guys on the field. Yep. He, <laughs> there are 12 men on the field for Scott, Cleveland. Scott ran out to safety, ran out on the field, and he didn't meet. Well, he's still out there. Now they can tell you somebody. They bring out two, and one comes in. That should make it even. Two, two came in. The way it is, you've got to have the correct number between the numbers, the right. correct number of players between the numbers once they set the clock. If you do not, then you can have an illegal substitution. So the additional five yards on the back-to-back -back penalties against Cleveland goes now into That's Cleveland two, territory two. to the 45-yard line, and Stephenville has first and 10. That's 10 yards of penalties. <laughs> And they didn't run it down. Chris Luker is in the game. He sends the evident motion to the near sideline. Hands the ball to Ferros. It's Ferros. Has checked that. Luker on a keeper across the 35 down to the 30-yard line. A beautiful fake from Luker. Fake me. He kept the ball. Pulled it out. He will go 20 yards on the keeper. And Luker gets to the 30-yard line. Boy, I tell you, you almost get the idea that Kellen's going to coach call my number. Now, you know, I'm, I'm the one that messed this thing up. I want to be the one to straighten it out. Now what? Now a fight. Is it a penalty against Stephenville? There is no flag down. They're moving the ball back from the 30 and have not spotted it anywhere. The ball is at the 30-yard line. What's the deal? The referee, the Stephenville coaching staff, is irate. What's, they're moving the ball back to the original line of scrimmage. It was what? What signal did he just make? Somebody help us! <laughs> I don't know what. I, honestly, I don't know. I, don't, I think that they they blew the play dead. Yeah, that's what it was. There was no play. They blew the play dead evidently before. It's first and five. Pitch to the near side. Hunter. Hunter finds the block across the 40. Inside 35. 30 keeps his feet. Oh! He falls at the 26 yard line. If Hunter keeps his feet, he scores. 18 yards on the carry to the 27 yard line and. Oh, if Hunter kept his feet. He hurdled one man at the 30 and just got tripped up for a touchdown saving tackle. They were real confused on defense again, Boots, making late, late uh, substitutions. Cleburne defense doing a lot of substitutions, as you're mentioning. Luker in the center. Pitch to the far side, Hunter. Hunter cuts back across the 25, and he's leveled at the 25. A great defensive play is made by Cumpy coming up from his free safety position. A gain of two on the play. That is the end of the third quarter, brought to us by Rent City Superstore. Our score, Cleveland 14, Steeple 6. We're back in one minute on KSTV. Once again, it's time for us to show our support for Yellow Jacket football. That means a lot of traveling. The all-new 99 Chevy Silverado pickup will get you there safely in comfort and in style. I invite you to stop by and see our staff about this all-new Chevy truck. And when you do, you will meet a staff that genuinely cares about you and your family. We consider ourselves family and encourage you to do the same. From all of our staff to you, travel safely and go Jackets! Town and Country Bank, and I'd like to introduce you to the head football coach of the Tarleton Texans, 
Craig Wiedemann, and I'd like to personally invite you to an exciting season of college football here at Tarleton State University. Come watch some of your former Jackets, Landon Cribs, Jeff Smith, Brad Couch, and Steve Bethay as we tackle the Lone Star Conference. to play here in Cleburne, your Yellow Jackets trailing Cleburne 14 to 6 as we start the Techstar Ford fourth quarter and speaking of Techstar Ford, Johnny? Yes sir. Did you get you one today? I got me a pickup. Johnny got him a brand new blue Yellow Jacket blue truck. I don't want to thank Doug Montgomery. At Techstar Ford, Luker in shotgun, trips to the far side, one to the near side. Luker on a quarterback draw across the 25, cuts inside to the 25 and that is it. A gain of one maybe on the play. It's going to set up third down and seven to eight. And you know what happened when I when I walked out of there? I said, what'd you say? I didn't play too much, Bubba. Bubba. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry Jeff. You're, you're quite welcome. Third down and eight coming for Stephenville. Trips to the far side, twins to the near side. Luker is in shotgun with 11.30 and counting in the contest. Cleveland 14, Stephenville 6. Snap back. Luker setting up, looking to throw, has an open receiver caught at the 14-yard line. To his knees is the receiver. It's enough for the first down, making the catch for Stephenville. Cardwell. Cody Cardwell ran just about a 12 to 14-yard hook pattern, and it's 11 yards on the reception. First down, Stephenville. Cody forgot he was in high school football. He tried to get up and run there, and he's like, okay, yeah, I can't do that, can I? Well, just give me about five more years, and then maybe I can. Yeah, really. First and ten for the Jackets at the Cleburne 14-yard line. Luker under center sends the tailback. Evan in motion to the near sideline. Quick pass to Cardwell. Makes the catch at the five. Gets to the goal line. Touchdown! What a great dive from Cody Cardwell. The play goes 14 yards, and Stephenville's within two, 14 to 12. And by the way, Quintus Cumbie, that was Cardwell that went by it. <laughs> Boy, did he fake him out at about the 10-yard line. What a great move he made. Caught the ball up high over the shoulder. Faked outside, Cumbie bent on it, and he just dove into the end zone, as you said, for the great touchdown. That's a quick strike offense for you. Stephenville will have to go for two here, and they will line up in the conventional two-point yeah. conversion. They will not start in the swinging gate. No, they Stephenville just... has to take a timeout because they do not have the right personnel on the field. We'll That's take a, a We'll take a 30-second timeout, 14-12, to 12, Cleburne on top, the two-point conversion when we come back in 30 seconds on KSTV. Show your true colors at the games by wearing official SABC merchandise. Everything from keychains to toboggans, t-shirts, caps, and more. Come to the Booster Club store, open every Friday in the foyer of the high school and see all of the items that we have to let everyone know you support the Jackets and the Honey Bees. And look for the big blue SAB trailer at the games. Everyone looks better in blue and gold. Dr. Albert A. Lilly, Doctor of Dentistry. The dental office of Dr. Albert A. Lilly wishes to salute Stephenville football and its tradition of excellence. Easter Air has become the name synonymous with excellence in Erath County. We recommend a checkup on your central heat and air unit every six months to keep it running at its best. Offering no interest financing on Lennox Systems, Easter Air, at 968-6494 or stop by at 1011 North Graham, Stephenville. Welcome back. Should we go to Ross on the sideline? Well, let's do that right after this extra point. All right. I think he does have something he wants to relate to us, but we'll wait till after this extra point. That's a great timeout right there, Boots. You know, you got to make sure you get this play set. This is a very, very important David's Mattress World extra point. 11 minutes to go, but that's not important right now because Luker lines up with three guys behind him. They'll send four wingbacks to the right side. Check that Evan goes in motion to the far side. Luker is in shotgun. He rolls to the far side, setting up, looking to throw, in some trouble. Tries to throw this in the back of the end zone. It's over the back of the end zone. Luker was in trouble and just threw it up for grabs. That's all he could do. The two-point conversion is no good. Stephenville 0 for 2 on extra points tonight. We'll go to the break after the touchdown. 11 minutes to go in the Techstar Ford fourth quarter. Cleveland 14, Stephenville 12, back in one minute on KSTV. Apartment living seems hassle-free until your bathtub overflows. 
or your bedroom goes up in smoke, ask your State Farm agent how Renner's Insurance can help cover the damage. Renner's Insurance covers your TV, your laptop, your speakers, your sneakers, your wall hangings, your fine porcelain, and lots of other stuff that could get ruined or even ripped off. If you need Renner's Insurance, State Farm is there. Texas Trucks in Stephenville is the home of real trucks, not little bitty trucks, but stout pulling rigs. If you're in the market for a one-ton dually or a three-quarter ton late model, low mileage, clean truck, then Texas Trucks is the place for you. Don't waste hours driving up and down the interstate looking for a great deal when Texas Trucks has already done it for you. They constantly scour the Southwest looking for that perfect late model, low mileage pickup. Now all you have to do is stop by Texas Trucks and pick out the one that's right for you. Texas Trucks, South Loop, Stephenville. <laughs> 